Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a NACA NACA four digit airfoil generator and plotter. So first, we're going to label our first cell airfoil. So we're going to type our airfoil code, and then we're going to type in max camber for the next cell, and then thickness, and then the position of our maximum camber. And for our example airfoil, we're going to be using a NACA 4415 airfoil. Maximum camber is going to be equal to the left function with B3, comma 1, and divided by 100, and that'll give us a 0.04. And then for thickness, we'll use the mid function, select the airfoil code, then comma 3, comma 2, divided by 100, that'll give us 0.15. And then we'll use the mid function again, and select B3 from airfoil code, comma 2, comma 1, divided by 10. That'll give us the position of our max camber as a percentage of the chord. And then we'll change the format of all three of those values to percent, remove the decimal points to where it's a whole number, and that's personal preference. I like percentages as whole numbers. For the format of the airfoil code, we're gonna go into custom, remove general here. We're gonna type in quote, NACA quote, and then give it a space, 0000, and then click OK. And now we can type in whatever number we want and it will automatically put an NACA in there for us. Formatting is always worth it. It just makes everything look better and easier to understand. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna add a cell called endpoints. Below endpoints, we're gonna go to insert and then symbols, symbol. And then we're gonna click delta and then the Greek phi symbol. And this will be our delta phi. This will be a value that we'll use. It will be a function which is going to be equal to 90 divided by the number of points, which for our example, we're going to be using 30 points, and then the number of points minus 1. And now we're going to go back to home. We're going to remove some of those decimal points. We're going to keep most of our stuff at four decimal points for this tutorial, and there will be a few things that won't, but this one will be. Next, when we come down here, we're going to insert symbol. Just like we did before, we're going to insert a degree symbol and then close, and then we're gonna copy that degree symbol and then delete it. And then we're gonna go up here to Delta Phi Home. We're gonna to go to More Number Formats, Custom, and then go up here, and we're gonna type in Quote, and then paste in our degree symbol, and then Quote, and then Close. And now our Delta Phi will be in units of degrees without actually having to type anything in or use a separate cell. Now our first column here is gonna be labeled ID. Our second column is gonna be labeled Phi. Third column, X and then yt of x, yc of x, yc prime of x, an apostrophe. And then we're gonna insert a symbol, we're gonna insert theta, close, and then we're gonna hit x upper, and then y upper, and then x lower, and then y lower. And then we're gonna select all of these, and we're gonna make them bold. You can use control B to do that. And now we're gonna select the T and YT of X, we're gonna hit Control-1 and click Subscript, and then do the same for YC of X, Subscript, Close, and then YC again, Subscript, OK. Then we're gonna select all of Upper, and then Lower, and change all of that to Subscript. And again, formatting is always worth it, it just makes everything cleaner and so much better and easier to understand. Then ID, we're gonna type in one, two, three. We're gonna drag it all the way down to 30. Then phi is gonna be equal to parenthesis F2 minus one parenthesis times delta phi, which is gonna be B9. We're gonna lock it in using dollar signs in front of the B Bravo and nine. Then we're gonna drag that all the way down to 30. And that'll give us all these values. We're going to go to home. We're going to remove some of those decimal places. Take it down to two decimal places. And then for x, x is going to be equal to 1 minus cosine parenthesis g2. But in front of g2, we're going to put the function radians. And then we're going to drag that all the way down. And then take that to four decimal places. For yt of x will be equal to 5 times thickness, which is cell B5, times parenthesis 0 0.2969 times parenthesis square root 
we're going to select phi and then drag it over here to H2. Since the formula was covering X, we had to select off and drag it over. And then all of that minus parenthesis 0 0.12600 times H2 again, now that we know what the value of X is, minus parenthesis 0 0.35160 times h2 to the power of 2 and we're going to go and take that exponential there and put it in parentheses just to make sure Excel doesn't make any mistakes with PEMDAS it tends to go crazy and then we're going to do plus parenthesis 0 0.28430 times h2 again that's our x value to the power of 3 and then we're going to put that exponential in its own set of parentheses there just make sure PEMDAS works and then that quantity minus b11 and we'll label that here in just a second times h2 our x value to the power of 4 And each of these 0 0.2843, 0 0.3516, those are experimentally derived values pulled from a textbook. We're actually going to go back and change that minus to a plus, and then we're going to hit enter, we're going to accept the correction. We're going to make sure everything looks right. We're going to go over here and type in negative 0 0.1015. And this value is what's going to determine whether or not we have an open or closed trailing edge on our airfoil on the actual plot. And it's also known as the experimental value A4. We had A0, A1, A2, A3, and then A4 determines whether or not the trailing edge is closed or open not when you plot the values. We drag it down, make sure everything looks right before we go too far. We're gonna go ahead and lock in B11 here using dollar signs and then lock in B5 the thickness, and then we're going to go ahead and drag it down again. Everything is looking right this time. And we're going to drag all the way down to ID number 30. We're going to paste this value down here. Then we're going to change the title of that to just trailing edge A4 value. We're going to unbolt that and then unbolt those two. And then we're going to take this. We're going to make this equal to a function. We're going to equal and select closed trailing edge. We're going to select open trailing edge. We're going to italicize these to make sure these are known as an example value. And we're just going to simply drag that cell in within the formula to be able to select whether or not we want open or closed trailing edge. Now we go to YC of X in column J. It's going to be equal to B4 times parenthesis, parenthesis 2 times B6, which is our position of max camber, minus H2, which is our X, parenthesis times h2, again our x value, parenthesis, divided by position of max camber again, this time squared, and then because it's an exponential we're going to go ahead and put it in its own set of parentheses to make sure PEMDAS works. Then we're going to close out all the parentheses here. We're going to lock cell b4 using dollar signs, and then lock cells b6, and that way when we drag it the only cells that will move is h2. So now we'll drag it all the way down to 30, and you can use more or less points if you want, but 30 is usually sufficient, unless you just have some wildly crazy geometry. We're gonna set these to four decimal places. Now for YC prime of X, this one's gonna be equal to parenthesis two times max camber, cell B4, parenthesis divided by position of max camber, cell B6, parenthesis, we're gonna add in an extra parenthesis in the front to match the closing parenthesis times parenthesis 1 minus x, which is cell H2, divided by cell B6, the position of max camber, and close out that parenthesis. And then we're going to lock cells B6 using those dollar signs. We're also going to lock cell B4 using dollar signs. And drag it all the way down. Those values look good. We're going to go up here, change decimal places to four decimal places. For theta, we're going to go up here. We're going to put in the function equals degrees A tan K2. We're, then we're going to drag it all the way down, make sure our numbers look good, and then we're going to select all of that column, and then we're going to change it to four decimal places. Now we're going to go over to X upper, which is going to be equal to H2 minus parenthesis I2, 
which is y2 of x times parenthesis sine parenthesis radians parenthesis yc prime of x and then drag that over to theta and then close out in the parentheses accept the correction and now we're going to drag that all the way down that gives us these numbers these numbers look good we're going to do the same for y upper we're going to do j2 plus parenthesis i2 times cosine radians l2 close out the parentheses hit enter drag it all the way down just like we did before and then x lower we're going to do h2 plus parenthesis yt of x which is i2 times sine radians theta close out all those parentheses perfect drag her down and then for y lower is equal to j2 minus parenthesis i2 times parenthesis cosine radians and then theta which is l2 close out the parentheses just like we did before except the correction and then drag her all the way down to 0.3 and you'll see some negative values popping up here and that's because it's the y lower and it should be like that for x upper plot we're going to do m2 times b15 which is simply x upper times the chord and then we're going to drag it all the way down and for now our chord is one inch and then we have y upper plot for y upper plot we're going to take y upper times the chord which is still just one inch and then we're going to lock in that, that value for the chord with dollar signs we're going to go ahead and copy that just to make things quicker and then we're going to have o2 which is x lower times our b15 locked and then we'll do the same for y lower plot we'll select y lower times control v now we'll take these three and we'll just drag them all the way down like we did the others boom perfect now we'll select all of those we'll mess with the decimal places get them at four decimal places and all uniform now we're going to go to insert and then under charts we're going to go to scatter with smooth lines and then we're just going to drag it over into some area where we can work with it and then we're going to select data add and then for series name we're going to do upper for series x values we're going to select x upper plot all from 1 to 30 and then for the y values we'll do y upper plot select all those and then click ok and then we'll add another series called lower and for the series x values we'll select x lower plot select that entire column and then for series y values we'll do y lower plot just like we did with x and then click ok and then click ok and now we have a funky looking airfoil but that's just simply a result of the scale on x and y axes of the actual chart itself We'll get it moved over to a decent area here to get it stretched out and you can see it's already starting to take better shape. We're going to go to axis options. We're going to set the minimum to zero. Maximum we're going to leave it auto so that way whenever the board which is on the x-axis changes it'll automatically update to reflect that so it doesn't just start trimming it off. And then we're going to add chart element. We're going to add a chart title. We're going to go up to the formula bar on the top and we're going to select the NACA 4415 cell and that'll that way whenever that changes the title to the chart will automatically change with it we're going to go ahead and bold it just make it look a little nicer and now we can see if we change it it'll, to 2412 it'll automatically update both the shape and the title now we can change it to 2225 changes it to this airfoil and also changes the title change it back to 4415 and now it's back to 4415 now we're going to click on the dots here and we're going to go over to the paint bucket and we're going to go to line we're going to change it to black black will i promise you will just look better we'll do the same for the lower line change it to black now we'll select the markers on the upper line we'll select the fill not the border but the fill 
change it to black and do the same for the lower line. And you can see that it's still slightly orange and that's because we forgot to turn off the border. So we're going to do that. We're going to change the border to black on the markers in both the upper and lower. And now we can we have an airfoil plot where we can see all of the points used to generate the plot. Or we can turn off the points and have a much smoother airfoil, which we'll do now. And you simply go into marker, marker options, and then just select none for both the upper and lower lines. Now we have a nice, beautiful, smooth airfoil that automatically updates both the airfoil and the title of the plot simply by changing the NACA code. Now again, this only works for four digit airfoils. For five and six digit, it will have to use something completely different. Mm -hmm.